to Wolf It Down live right here on Facebook. Uh, we're super excited to be cooking with you this week uh, because we're celebrating Mother's Day and Mother's Day is right around the corner. I don't know if you've uh, planned out an exact menu for Mother's Day, but we've got a great one for you. And as always in the kitchen, my lovely co-host who will be cooking and hanging out with today, uh, we've got Amanda Gold, my producer. Hi, everybody. And uh, we also have Matt Macera, our corporate chef. Hey. And uh, so, so we're going to be hanging out for the next, like, may, maybe about an hour, sort of making a couple of really great dishes with you today. And uh, Amanda is locked and loaded uh, uh, to answer all of your questions. She's going to be uh, the moderating host with the most. And Dro drop we them in the chat. Drop them like they're hot in the chat. We'll, we'll get to as much as we can. Exactly. Um, and last week, how many uh, comments we have last week? Make yeah, questions. A, a lot to go through, which means I won't get to all the comments. But, yeah. You know, so yeah, and la we'll last do, week we'll we had we last week we had like five five hundred and fifty something comments kind of come through. So Amanda's going to do her best to read them all, but keep them coming. Um, it's going to be great. But so let's talk about a menu. Yeah. Mother's Day brunch. Mother's Day brunch. I don't know if you've got a menu planned out already. Mother's Day, uh, don't forget, it's Mother's Day this week and coming up this Sunday. Uh, but we're going to make an amazing frittata with you. I also know that today is Cinco de Mayo. Yes. I just want happy Cinco, Cinco de Mayo, Mayo everybody. Yeah. So if you're enjoying some tacos and maybe a little margarita, yeah. right? Um, let's now, get ready for now. You're, now you're going to know what to make for breakfast in a few days. Exactly. We'll put that aside and we'll start thinking about uh, Mother's Day, which is right around the corner. So we're super excited with this menu. So let's talk about it. We're going to be making peach bellinis from scratch from the very beginning, show you how to make an amazing drink that you can actually batch out and pour for everybody and have a really great Sunday cocktail. Those are always really fun for brunch. And then we're going to show you how to make an amazing uh, asparagus, gruyere, and smoked ham frittata. I don't know if you've ever made one before, but it is a cinch omelet. It's really beautiful. It's very impressive. And it's a great thing to pop down in the middle of the table that everybody get a chance to tuck into. And then also we're gonna show you how to put a really gorgeous fresh salad on the side with that. We're gonna make a, a vinaigrette from scratch with the whole thing. So that's it, Wolf it Down live. Lots uh, of good techniques. Lots of good techniques today. Uh, really great cooking class. We're so excited uh, that you are joining us. And uh, we got the comments rolling in? Yeah. We got, we got the comments, we got the viewers, we got the people, we, we got, got We got some cheers, we got Colorado, <laughs> We're South here. Carolina. South Carolina, Colorado. Love caviar. Who Love doesn't? it. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, so here we are. We're going we're gonna to get this going. So let's talk about first things first. So we're, we're going to make our peach bellini, right? So our, our peach bellini, right, um, it, uh, exists with frozen peaches. So uh, we got a little overhead cam. We're going to show you what these look like. Boom. Okay. So we got a cup of each. Now this is gonna make enough sort of orangey peach juice for a bottle of Prosecco. And so this is one cup of frozen peaches. And I think right now, because it's not quite peach season, it's a little early for peaches for stone fruit, it's a little bit later. Uh, but we're gonna be uh, pureeing this with the orange juice and this is gonna be the mix that's gonna make it sort of like fresh and peachy. So it's a, and a little bit more survival. And kind of shoulder season-ish. Yeah, we're definitely in like sort of the stone fruit shoulder season, not quite yet. And speaking of seasons, Amanda, I like your backdrop this week. Oh yeah, it's Lots. spring. Lots yeah. of bees. Last week I had the fire. Yeah. Now spring has sprung. Yeah, I, I, and we're I can't celebrate it. We're celebrating the moms and it's spring. Exactly, I, I, and I can't tell if, if it's like this really beautiful meadow or it's like a hay fever zombie apocalypse. <laughs> It's good somewhere thing, in the middle. Good thing I don't have allergies. <laughs> exactly. But uh, yeah, it's going to be great. So anyway, so here we go. So we've got our peaches. They're going to go into the blender. And uh, then we're going to take our orange juice. We're going to pop this in. And then we're going to puree this until it's completely smooth. Now, this is going to get a little loud while I'm doing this. But while we're doing this, you want to you saber the Prosecco? Sure. Let's talk about Prosecco. Let's talk about uh, dropping the saber thing. Because this could be kind of a fun show-off moment for everybody, right? Oh, you're going you to get a little demo? You're going to do it? Yeah. Why right. not? We're gonna let's saber some shit. This whole bottle explodes right now. It'll just make for great television. <laughs> It'll be that internet meme. So of if all you want time. to, it's yeah. fun to celebrate by sabering any kind of bubbles or champagne carbonated. Here, pop stuff it up here so we, you can do that overhead. So don't, this is just a don't try this at home in your own kitchen. Um, what you want to do is you want to try and find Ooh. the seam of the bottle. There's a seam on each side, mm -hmm. and so this seam, there's one right here. There we go. There's also one on the back side right here. So this is a very important tip. Like I don't know if you've ever heard of like sabering, but uh, but Matt's literally going to take the back side of a knife and pop not just the cork out, but literally pop the top of it off. So it's a very super pinkies out fun thing to go do. It's a little dangerous, mm -hmm. but that's just how we roll. All right, here we go. Okay, ready? Okay, here we go. Hold up, hold up. Are you gonna get this? Are your hands insured, Matt? 
My yeah, hands. <laughs> nice yeah. big close-up shot. So you want to use the back side of a knife. Now, obviously not the front side of the knife because you don't yeah. want to damage the you blade. You just want like blunt force. Blunt force. Right here. Okay, that's it, that's it. Okay, that's it. No pressure. No pressure, no Matt. No pressure, Matt. No pressure, Matt. Here we go. Oh, 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 not yet. Oh, there it is. Hey, everybody. Fourth time's a charm. Fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. I love that. Now, now take a look at this, right? So this is how, how fun this is. Now, you want to be it's really sharp. careful. It's super sharp, right? So what happens is Matt literally just, like, cracked the entire top of the bottle off. So you just want to do that and then just take a, a towel, right, and just get ready to pour, but it's a really, really super clean. If you do it right, it's a really super clean break, so you're not going to get any glass or anything, but but I think that's kind of nice. Yeah. That's good. All right, cool. Nice so, job, Matt. You've got some good job, Matts. Love that. Yay. Love that. Oh, Matt. Matt the saberer, man. Oh, Here we go. Love <laughs> All right, we're going to buzz this up. So someone wants to know why um, orange juice instead of like just peach nectar? If you can find it. If you can find peach nectar, cool. I can definitely find frozen peaches and I can definitely find orange juice. Right now in the summer, we use super ripe peaches and we actually macerate them and make a really nice peach syrup and kind of puree, puree the whole thing. But I think this is kind of like a fun hybrid. It kind of gets the job done. And let me check out the viscosity of this. Now you definitely want to uh, puree it until it's really, really smooth. I just want to check this real fast. Yeah, this looks really great. Okay, so this is a high speed blender. And look how gorgeous that is. So this has kind of got a flavor hybrid that's somewhere in between a Bellini and a Mimosa. We're gonna call it Bellinis, uh, but we're gonna use peaches as a really great, uh, or orange is a really great yeah, medium to kind of just juice up the peaches and so they kind of really nice and fresh. And if you're okay. like a mom with another one on the way, perhaps, yeah. and didn't want to use Prosecco, you could just use sparkling water. Sparkling water. And this would be yeah. delicious, Absolutely, right? totally sparkling water. Yeah. So here we go. So we're going to drop this in the bottom. A Nixie. Oh, a Nixie. A Nixie. Yeah, Nixie exactly. for your thoughts. Nixie, a, Nixie Bellini mocktail. That's, that's a great idea. I like yeah. that. Okay, so we've got our peach and orange juice puree nice and smooth, okay? And then you got like a little stir stick. And our perfectly sabered Nice job. Perfectly savored champagne. And I think it's a great way to kick off Mother's Day. Yeah. Now here's the deal. You don't have to savor the champagne. Don't go crazy. But I think this recipe for a Bellini mix is awesome. And it's super easy to make and all the ingredients are really easy to get your hands on. And then you take a little spoon, kind of give us a stir and make sure that all the champagne and the peach juice starts to mix together. Would you garnish that with anything? Would you like drop a little peach in there? Or would you? I think I think you I think you could drop a strawberry in there. I think that would be really nice, right? I think you like could a really nice carrot carrot oranges. Yeah, I think that'd be really nice. You could top yeah. off with like a little um, orange slice, a little orange jam, you know, if you want to uh, top it off with a peach. But I think as is, I think is a very pretty cocktail. So I, I don't think you have to go crazy with it, but I mean, that, that's a nice touch, man. I like that. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do a couple more. So that's it, folks. You got a great right. cocktail to kick off Mother's Day. It's super easy to make. Peaches, orange juice, puree it. Nice little bottle of Prosecco. And Amanda, here you go. Nice little cocktail. Yeah. I think it'd be kind of fun. We always want to kick off our Wolf of Down lives with a nice Cheers. little fresh drink. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Happy, boom, boom, boom. Happy Mother's Day to me. Happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day to you. Day. Happy And happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. It's literally the hardest job in the world. And we're super excited to be celebrating moms out there everywhere. Good drink. Yes, yummy. Absolutely delicious. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Delicious, perfect. Let's get cooking. Okay, so um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, make a salad dressing that's gonna go with the salad, that's gonna go with the frittata, right? So we wanna kinda get ahead of that so the, uh, the, the, the flavors inside the vinaigrette have a chance to kinda meld and really start to develop and become super delicious, right? 
So we got the ingredients over here, and if you haven't put together uh, what's called an emulsion before for a salad dressing, super simple, and the it's classic. This is really great classic uh, French cookery, so this is definitely a classic French vinaigrette. And before we kind of jump into the technique, let's talk about these ingredients. And again, uh, um, as always with our cooking classes, if you want to cook along with us, please go over to wolfitdown.com forward slash live for a list of all of our cooking classes. And there's two buttons underneath each class, one for the recipe and then one for a direct link to RSVP. So we know you're coming. So you can get ahead with this and that way you can either cook along or at least follow along. And then that way you got the recipe locked and loaded and these cooking classes will exist forever on Facebook. So you can always go back and watch. Let's talk about this vinaigrette. So we're gonna make a classic French vinaigrette here. Now let's talk about all these ingredients before we get going, just because I, I like to show you what's happening, right? So here, here we go. So, so here we go. So we got um, champagne vinegar, which, is good, which uh, can easily be uh, red wine vinegar or apple cider vinegar or whatever you got, right? White vinegar might be a little too harsh. Yeah, maybe cut it, dial it back a little bit. Yeah, but, but e either champagne vinegar or apple cider, either one's gonna be great. Okay, then we got honey. Now honey's gonna be the sugar balance, which is gonna make everything nice and smooth and taste really just sort of perfect. Mustard. Now, really good uh, Dijon mustard is gonna be the uh, blend in between the oil and the vinegar that's gonna give you that uh, perfect emulsified texture for a vinaigrette, right? So we, we definitely have that. We have a shallot we're gonna finely mince. We got some fresh thyme, and then we got some salt, and then we have some really good light blended uh, uh, olive oil, okay? So 100% uh, olive oil on this, I always think is a little too much, a little yeah. too harsh, mm -hmm. but if you cut it in half, I think it's really great. Yeah, okay? this is about uh, three quarters cup of vegetable oil and a quarter cup of extra virgin. So you, so you get the, you get the lightness of the vegetable oil and you get the flavor of the olive oil, which I think is great. Okay, cool. So let's put this aside and then we're gonna, first things first, we're gonna finally chop our uh, shallot here. And one thing you also wanna do while we're kinda getting prepped here is turn your oven on to 375 degrees. Uh, because a little bit later, once we get our frittata rolling, that's gonna go straight into the oven to start to bake. So preheat your oven. Preheat your okay. oven. Okay. All right, so here we go. So, so when we when we cut a shallot, we're gonna we're gonna do like the way we always normally cut an onion. We're gonna cut it three times, kind of what we call planks, and then we're gonna flip it this way. We're gonna do sticks, boom, and then we're gonna flip around this way, and we're gonna cut the sticks into cubes, and then the shallot literally just kind of falls apart into a really nice fine dice. And this is kind of like formulaic, right? So you could do like if you were doing. Um, a different kind of vinaigrette, you could do scallions if you wanted, or yeah, you it could, could do garlic, scallions or garlic, like any kind of like and then same with the herb, start. it could be yeah. swapped out for chives or oregano or basil or whatever you want. And and that's what I really like about this. This is fabulous technique. Now yep. this is a great recipe, but most importantly, and and I think that when it comes to great cooking, especially the way we're concerned, we want to show you techniques first and foremost, and that way when you get into the kitchen, uh, the pantry can tell, can tell you what's for dinner tonight versus having to follow along exactly, precisely to some recipe you saw, right? So this is gonna be a classic vinaigrette and all this stuff can be totally interchangeable, right? Okay, so here we go. So shallots, we're gonna add a fresh thyme to this. And again, the fresh thyme could be parsley, it could be rosemary, it could be basil, it could be chives. All right, and then thanks so much. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our John mustard. All right, boom. All right. Oh, I'll keep this moving. Thank you. So, um, Teresa is on with her sister Claudia, and her sister Claudia is turning 60 tomorrow. So, shout out to Claudia. Happy birthday, Claudia. Happy birthday, Claudia. Hi, Teresa. How you doing? Um, super excited to see all, all of our Florida people uh, coming up in Miami in a couple of weeks for the South Beach Food and Wine Festival. We got three events coming up. Uh, they're all sold out, by the way. Which it's is a real event. Awesome. It's a real event. Yeah. It's a real event. Uh, you know, thank God. This man. is like kind excited. of the first thing you've traveled to, right? It, um, other than going to other Alaska. Than, I would say other than filming. But. Yeah. Um, we haven't been on a plane in quite some time, so it'll be nice to kind of get out. It, it, yeah. I love Florida. It'll be nice to kind of go back. Um, super excited about all that. Okay, here we go. So now we're going to take our Dijon right, our honey, our salt, our shallot, our fresh thyme, and kind of make a little paste out of it. Then we're gonna add the vinegar to this, okay? And then we're gonna make one very kind of wet, sloshy little product here. Now this is a really good tip uh, because sometimes it's hard to uh, blend and stir at the same time. So what I like to do is take a tea towel and you wanna kind of roll it out to like a snake, okay, like that. 
and then we're gonna make a collar. And then we're gonna take our bowl here, and then we're gonna drop it right in the middle of the collar, and that way it kind of floats and holds still, mm -hmm. right? And then you can take the oil, and you can chit chat with somebody while so you emulsify your vinaigrette. What I usually just do is I just throw it all into a mason jar and shake, shake, shake. Shake it. Mm -hmm. You can totally do that. It or into a blender. Yeah, you, you can <laughs> pop into a blender. You can put it into a mason jar. It won't stay emulsified that way. Um, well, it will stay emulsified this way. It will totally stay emulsified this oh, way, for interesting. sure. interesting. Right? Why? Yeah. Um, because mainly because of the mustard, right? Because um, with with the when you shake it in a jar, it'll actually begin to settle. But when you kind of stir it slowly like this together, yeah. because of, because when you do that, you're adding all the oil at one time, yeah. so it kind of overloads the mustard versus having like a nice slow drizzle like this. Yeah. So the um, the the creamy texture of the mustard itself, and and you can almost do the same thing with an egg yolk. Um, it will bind the uh, oil and the vinegar together, so you won't have a separated vinaigrette. It'll be nice and creamy and nice and thick. Okay, so we're gonna um, whisk all this together. Now let's talk about some of our ingredients for a salad that we're gonna make in a little bit later, right? So we got some fresh ingredients for just, all that too, just right? Just greens. Yeah, some nice big fresh greens. This. And the greens can be whatever you want. It could be spinach, it could be kale. Right? We got a nice little mixture of all kinds of fun stuff. We've got um, beautiful pea shoots. Pea shoots, yeah. baby kale, some uh, arugula, mm -hmm. baby spinach, all sorts of nice yummy stuff. That's Very great. spring. Yep, totally. Very spring. Very looks spring. like my background. Yep, I love that. Like, less, be less bees though. <laughs> you got a bunch of bees. You got bees like swarming around your head. Now. You guys want to hear something crazy? So, so we keep bees uh, at our house. We've been um, kind of hosting bees for, God, 10 years or so. And normally, cause we, have, we have three bee towers. And inside each tower, there's about 10,000 bees. We have about 30,000 honeybees. And with that, we get about 150 pounds of honey a year. Um, some years are more, some years are less. Um, but we love it, and it's a really great hobby. Um, and this year, like probably every other year, occasionally one of the hives will peace out. Uh, if they get too crowded inside the tower, they'll just leave and then they'll just you know go someplace else. So so we had one empty tower and then so like our, they're all they're all just gone. Well, no, here's the deal, and it happens occasionally. Like so, the, the guy that kind of maintains our beehives, his name is Mike Vigo, super cool guy. We'll have him on sometime. He's great, right? So he he sent me an email and says, dude, I just ran by to check out your bees, and uh, and one of your hives are empty. I'll come by in April and I'll refill it with like a you know a fresh queen and you know some new new fresh young bees and then he sent me an email and said dude there's a a wild uh a, a wild group of bees right a wild bee um um colony colony has moved into your blank tower so we have like this new very oh. very interesting group of bees in our yard because so, i was looking, i wonder if the honey's going to taste different no it's going to be crazy right? i cannot like, you don't wait. Even know where it came from yeah i don't know like i've never seen these bees before I've, it's going to be super exciting they're different i saw them in the garden today so they're like squatter so they bees like, they're they, squatter like, bees. they look different like you can tell like oh they, this is not my bee they look different they look different <laughs> they look they're like different bees they look it's going to be funny it's not my bee yes it's not my bee. yeah well they, well they are now all right guys yeah. so check it out so we have a fully emulsified nice light vinaigrette and you can put this into a jar uh, uh, or uh, uh, put it into a deli container, and that's normally how we like to store stuff. And this will last a week for sure. And, and we always like to make a nice big uh, batch of vinaigrette. And I think making a vinaigrette is one of those really special, very simple things to master. Excuse me, buddy. Especially during the summer. There you go. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> Especially during the summer, because it's all about fresh salads. All, the, you know, this entire season coming up. Um, it's like always a good idea just to have a jar of that in the fridge. Yeah, and it's just yeah. kind of like one of those things that people just think you're a magician because you made like fresh salad dressing from scratch. It's yeah. kind of cool. So you can get the box mix of greens, make a salad dressing from scratch, and you got something kind of special. Okay. Kind of so let's take a look at this. Now we are going to put together a frittata. Now a frittata, if you haven't had a chance to make one before, a frittata is a super easy, very impressive omelet that could easily feed six people, maybe even more, six to eight people couple of things that you're going to need. We'll, we'll talk about the ingredients for a sec, but let's talk about the equipment most importantly, right? So this is a 12-inch non-stick pan. Now, you need a non-stick pan to make this thing from scratch, right? You could give it a shot with a stainless steel pan. Or a skillet. Or a skillet. Um, but if you really want to guarantee it's a success on top of this, you might want to get yourself a big nonstick. And the reason that we like a really big nonstick pan like this versus a smaller one that you might have for omelets, this one 
for a lot of reasons because you can just make scrambled eggs for a big group, six people, eight people. And I don't know about you guys at home, but normally when I cook at home, I'm always cooking for six, eight, 10 people. So this is a great tool to have in your arsenal when you start to cook but specifically a really good tool for this one because the nonstick surface and the way it cooks and the fact that it can go from the stove top to the oven and then straight to the table as we kind of flip it out, crucial. Nonstick, 12 inch, it's perfect for this particular dish. Now let's talk about ingredients. We're gonna be cracking a dozen eggs. We have a nice big mix of really good Gruyere cheese. Now I like really good Gruyere cheese, uh, nice and nutty, um, really delicious flavor, great stretch. Um, a very distinctive cheese. Mm -hmm. I think it's nice and uh, it's mild, but it's nutty all at the same time. I really, really like it. Now we also have some cream. We have some smoked ham. We've got a little bit of lemon juice. We have fresh marjoram, which is my absolute favorite herb of all time. It smells like French girls. It smells like French girls. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'm gonna tell that story for the 100,000th time. <laughs> Onions diced. We're gonna dice up an onion. Um, we got a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and a little bit of butter, okay? So we're gonna crack the eggs and just kind of get that out of the way first and foremost. And then we're gonna mince the onion. Let me, let me go and do that. We'll kind of get that going that way we can kind of get them started. So we're gonna take half an onion and we're gonna dice this up. We're gonna take our pan, uh, start it off on low. We're gonna add our extra virgin olive oil and our butter. Kind of get that going first. Let that start to melt. Then we're gonna take our onion here. And again, planks, sticks, and cubes. The tell way we always dice up everything. Tell people why you do olive oil and butter, because I think you typically do a blend. You it's very mix. Italian. It's very Italian. The olive oil and the butter mix together. You think? I, I feel like, like butter's not that Italian. In, in northern Italy, oh, all yeah. day long. Oh, yeah, we're south. Yeah, in northern oh, yeah, Italy, all south. day long. Yeah. They, all they use are butter. Here we go. Planks, sticks. But does it raise the smoke point? Is that why you do it? You get the flavor of the butter and you raise the smoke point with the oil? Or is it just for flavor? No, not really. I think it's just more, f instead of using like half a stick of butter right. in this, it's like just like- Like makes you feel better about yeah, yourself? It, yeah, it's a little, little more health conscious. You get, um, you still get some of that butter flavor, but you just have some really nice extra virgin olive oil as well. It, it, it's, it's a really, really nice mix, right? So you get the butter flavor and you get the olive oil smoke point. It's kind of best of both worlds. I think it's really nice. So we're gonna take our onion, we're gonna dice this up, and then we're gonna kind of give this a head start. Now we already have our smoked ham diced. So if you haven't had a chance to do that, you can add that and you could absolutely add bacon to this uh you could yeah, add somebody asked if you could use chorizo chorizo would be fantastic now i'm a big again, fan of that person whoever asked i that. like you yeah. i like you a lot who's who said chorizo um you know there's a lot of comments you're my friends don't don't, a, don't ask me questions I can't answer <laughs> right away, it's coming in fast and furious yeah Anyway, Chorizo person, congratulations, great call, I like that. So, so we wanna show you a fantastic technique. And again, use your imagination, open up the fridge. What do you got, what do you like? Make this your own, it's a, it, as long as you get the cream, swear to God, the cream and the egg ratio right, everything else is a variable. 100%. And someone also wanted to know if this would freeze well. Freeze? Uh, yeah. um, After being made? Mm -hmm. I feel like cooked eggs don't freeze that well. Yeah, I would say no. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I understand what the point of that would be. Right? The, the texture that yeah. you're trying to achieve when sure. it comes right out. Sure. However, what I often do is I will take these ingredients and I'll like muffin tin them and make it like individual ones. Like frittata bites. Yeah, like I mean, not like baby, for not like baby muffins, but uh -huh. like regular muffins, mini frittatas, and then wrap them really well, at least, so that they'll, they'll last like a little bit longer, and then yeah. good grab and go breakfast. Um, I think that's a good idea. Now, if you want to try the freezes, um, and again, you know, um, we haven't tested this, so you're kind of you're kind of on your own as far as experiment experimenting with this. But if you wanted to uh, pop these same mixture and pop them into uh, a muffin tin individually and kind of bake them off, and then freeze those individually, and then try to you know pop them into the oven, kind of warm them up, it might be a good grab and go breakfast is like exactly what you said. I think it's kind of cool, whatever. Um, somebody wants to know if um, they have a 10 inch pan, should they do nine or 10 eggs? Um, yeah, I, I think that would be like a either, really, really good either call. Either or, right? Yeah, exactly. I would just, yeah. So if you got a smaller pan, let's just lose, let's keep the cream the same, but let's lose two of the eggs. Yeah. Okay. Always keep the cream the same. Exactly. All right, here we go. So we've got our um, asparagus dice. Yeah, it's for your asparagus. Okay, thanks buddy. All right, boom. So wait, what's in there right now? Just, uh, just the, onions, just butter, onions, and, and oil. olive oil. Yep. Okay. I added a little bit of salt to help the onions uh, sweat. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So here's the deal. So next up, okay, we're gonna add our margarine to this, right? 
Okay. Marty's going to go in. Boom. And then we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice to this to really kind of brighten it up. God, it smells so great. I love marjoram. Marjoram is like this underrated fresh herb that I don't know if you see it at a grocery store because it's not parsley, it's not thyme, it's not rosemary. If you haven't tried marjoram, it's my fave. It smells so good. It's right my now. favorite, right? I remember the first time I went to uh, France when I was a kid. Okay, hey guys, here we go. Onions, uh, marjoram, asparagus. That's going to go in. All right, we're going to give this a nice little saute. And let these start to cook for a second. And uh, we want them cooked. We want the onions slightly caramelized. We want the asparagus nice and bright and fresh. Let this cook down for a second. We're gonna finish it with a squeeze of lemon juice. Make sure all this is seasoned with salt and pepper. Ham's going in. Eggs are gonna go in. Cream's gonna go in. Cheese is gonna go in. Okay, those are the next bits. Can you talk about the type of ham that you're using? So this is like Black Forest smoked deli ham. So this, this literally three sheets. We bought it at a. Oh, there you go. Thank you, buddy. We bought it at a deli and then cubed it up. And again, this could be pancetta. This could be bacon. This could be turkey sausage. It could be turkey bacon. You can leave it out completely if you don't want. To, if you want to make this vegetarian, you know, it doesn't have to add the ham. But the ham is really nice. It's a really soft, smoky ham. Great flavor. Super tender. Nice bite. I think it's going to be awesome. Dozen egg is going to go in. Crack these one at a time. This is also a really good thing to do with kids because they like to sit and crack eggs and mix all this stuff together. So if it is a Mother's Day thing and you're, you know, Here's supervising or making brunch for mom because mom doesn't really want to do all the cooking and do all the dishes. Just saying. Do you remember the... <laughs> At Christmas on Saturday Night Live, yes. that Kristen Wiig commercial. I got a robe. It's so good. <laughs> and I, I got a robe. robe. Right. right. So, like, here's what I don't want to do on Mother's Day. I, I just I got my a, hand on the stove. I got a Game Boy. I got, I got a skateboard. And I got a and robe. And I have to go make breakfast. <laughs> I'm going to go make you breakfast. And I just burned my arm. Yeah. Uh, I get it. I, so, here's the deal. This is a, or this is a, a dad goof proof easy dish that i promise you will end up being a new family favorite if not a new tradition and i think that's kind of great there's a couple of things with a lot of things a few things that my kids really really like that i make they love my pancakes they love my scrambled eggs i make great omelets but when it kind of comes to making like a really great dish like this the patata is a showstopper because you can flip it out drop it on the table and it and everybody goes wow you know and you felt like you really did something kind of fun and, and, it, and it just kind of gets everybody into the mix, so it's great. So a dozen eggs. All right, we're gonna just pop else, all the yolks. What else could you use marjoram in, someone wants to know? I'm sorry, what? What else could you use marjoram in, someone wants to know? So marjoram, I remember the first time I went to France when I was, uh, God, I was like 19 years old, I was a culinary student. Uh, and I think it was my summer in between, you know, my freshman and sophomore year, right? And first time I went to France, I was broke, I had no money, I ate tomatoes and baguettes and brie. And I just remember every woman that walked past smelled like fresh marjoram. And I didn't even piece that together until later that, that there's a, there was a marjoram derivative and whatever really popular perfume that women were wearing back in like the early 90s, right? And literally every time I smell marjoram right now, it takes me back to France. And I was really just like, you know, like slow walks through the city and you feel like you're part of this, the, 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 the vibe and the, the vibe. culture of, of Paris. So that's to me where, where it kind of feels like really super friendly. I really like it a lot. And you can use marjoram as a substitution for anything you put parsley into, anything you add fresh thyme to. Oregano too. Oregano, anything, pizza, anything. Like to me, no joke, my favorite herb of all time is fresh marjoram. I love it. All right guys, so here we go. A dozen eggs cracked. Okay, we're gonna add the cream to this and kind of make this one good juicy mixture. Lovely. Okay. Boom. That looks really nice. You ready for the uh, lemon juice? Okay. Yeah. Here, I'll hit it with lemon juice. Oh, yeah, put the cheese in there. Yeah, cheese is gonna go in. Boom. And again, this could be cheddar. This could be. Uh, this could be Monterey Jack. This could be Swiss, could be whatever pepper you got laying around. If you were using chorizo, it would be really good if it were pepper jack. It would be really, really nice with that, with mm -hmm. question. Love it. All right, cool. So next up, so you got the lemon juice there? Yeah. Okay, so Max, add a little bit of lemon juice to that to really kind of heighten it. Let's go ahead and add some salt to this, too, because we haven't seasoned this yet. Let's go make sure the vegetables taste really, really good. Salt, pepper. The asparagus smells so good. Doesn't it smell great? Yeah. V super springy. Yeah, it smells so much like Super spring. springy. And again... Um, the asparagus is a variable, right? The technique is the most important thing with this. 
So I'm going to clean up the sides here. Now this is kind of important too from a presentation standpoint. When we add the eggs, let's just make sure that all these bits and pieces on the side are nice and clean. All right, it's going to give us but a beautiful presentation on that side. We're going to yeah. flip it out. We're going to flip the whole thing up. Okay, yeah. so now ham's going to go in. Bang. Give us one big mix. And again, don't forget, 375 degrees. We're going to bake this for somewhere between 18 to 20 minutes. Isn't that gorgeous? You could substitute the piece for uh, the asparagus for peas if you want to. Diced zucchini. Uh, this could be artichokes. This could be fresh Mushrooms. spinach. Okay. Mushrooms would be good in there. And if for some reason you were vegan, you could just saute that right up. And it would be delicious. Without the ham, obviously. Without the ham. Yeah. Yeah. Or if, if you're, you you're vegetarian, right? Product, if you're vegetarian. It's just like, yeah. Yeah. It's just like I mean, a beautiful veg, yeah. spring vegetable saute. I love it. All right, guys. So, guys, here we go. Dozen eggs. We got the cream. We got the cheese inside of here. 375. Now you want to get this nice and hot. So we're going to take the temp of this and we're going to really just kind of crank it up for a second. Okay? So that way once we add the eggs to the pan, they start to kind of cook pretty quickly. And we're going to do this sort of mock scramble just so everything starts to set. And then we're going to take the whole thing oven from the stove top, straight to the oven, and then we're going to bake it. Okay, ready to go? Someone wants to know if half and half works for cream. No. No. <laughs> it doesn't. You can't cook with half and half. You, you, can, you can cook with um, uh, whole milk if you want to, but half and half just separates. I'm not a big fan of it. All right, guys, so here we go. Now, what we want to do is make sure that we, um, you, you want to push all the ingredients around so they're evenly distributed through the top of this. Ham, asparagus, cheese, so it doesn't kind of settle as one big piece with the weight of the eggs as they start to kind of come through, okay? So now I'm going to turn it down just a little bit, and then we're going to give this sort of, sort of a slow little... Kind of keep, scramble on the bottom. Okay, we're gonna keep freeing the sides. Exactly, exactly right. So we're gonna take this uh, our rubber spatula and kind of go around the edges. All right, and we're gonna push our scrambled egg mixture to the center because we got a lot of eggs in here. There's a dozen eggs. Okay, so we want to make sure that the um, scrambled eggs that are starting to set on the bottom kind of end up on the top. Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Okay, let's kind of flip this over, and then once it starts to look like big puffy clouds and what we're doing right now is creating layers and that's going to help reduce the cook time yeah on the oven and also um just make it cook a lot more evenly and to be lighter mm -hmm. okay it's not gonna be so dense it does so look so light and fluffy doesn't it? it's beautiful yeah. this is spring time cooking at its finest you can already see some of that like gruyere stretching in there yeah totally without a doubt right so once we once it starts to set we're almost ready to go we're almost ready to go okay now this is where practice makes perfect on top of this. I'm already starting to get these really wonderful aromas of the Gruyere starting to touch the hot pan. It's starting to smell like melted cheese. Want some black pepper in there? Yeah, I sure do for sure. Okay, we're gonna hit this one more time. I'm gonna turn it down. All right, one more little, one more little, little sprinkle of salt, fresh cracked pepper on top of this. And we're gonna take our beautiful frittata as it exists right now. We're gonna pop this straight into the oven. Now. The bottom is going to be the top because we're going to flip this out. You heard me right. We're going to flip this out. And once you do it once, you'll master it. It's just kind of like one of those showstopper things that people are going to love. All right, here we go. Ready? 375, 18 to 20 minutes. And then we can talk about caviar for a little bit. Let's talk about caviar. Here we go. And other hot topics in the food world hot today. Hot topics. Mmm. I love frittatas, and I gotta tell you, if you, if you like, if scrambled eggs are kind of like yawn, whatever, uh, and omelets, like, like really like precise French omelets feel a little too tough, rock a frittata. Like frittata yeah. can be rustic, right? For, and, and can have so many different variables, depending on what you got laying around. Yeah, it's and really it's good. breakfast for the week. Yeah, it's you so keep, great. You just keep That's slicing right. away at that in the fridge. All right, guys, so here's the deal. Let, let, let's, let's talk about caviar. If you know me, you know I love caviar, and I've been working with Michael Passmore for, um, God, you know, sometimes you know people so long, you don't really know when you met them, but I feel like I've known him for like 15 years. 2012. Salt of the earth, <laughs> fantastic guy, uh, and so he produces literally the finest domestic caviar I've ever tasted, uh, Sacramento Delta, Pride of California, California product, right? This guy's absolutely amazing. So um, if you go on to passmorecaviar.com, 
and specifically look for wolf gray. That's our caviar. That's our caviar that we've hand selected with Michael. Um, and, and what you want to do is, is you want to uh, select two tins. Now, don't let the sticker shock fool you. This is the world's greatest caviar and it's worth every single bite. But we're gonna make it even better by offering a buy one, get one free opportunity. Select two tins, put it into your shopping cart. Then when you go to checkout, use Wolf It Down promo code in the promo box, and then we'll literally take one off the bill for you and you'll have two tens that you can either have one at home, give one to your your mother or your grandmother or just have you know have some caviar laying around. It's such a nice gift. It, it's really, really beautiful. So for the caviar fans um, that really love the stuff, and this and, is what it looks like. And you like can you put it. it on top of your frittata. Yeah, oh, and, and li listen, it's the reason that, that we're doing it now. So yeah. as soon as this is hot, we're totally putting creme fraiche and caviar on top of it. Now this is what it looks like, okay? So when you open up the, the bag, and, and you get this really cool uh, reusable bag too, it kind of comes along with it. There's a couple of these gel packs that we can never have enough of these. Totally. We're always, especially in the summertime, so it's nice to have some of these uh, in the freezer, uh, just to chuck into a cooler with hot dogs heading out to the barbecue, right? But, but the, let's, let's talk about caviar. So caviar, so the, to me, this is just the world's greatest stuff. Okay, so you're gonna get this 10. Now, so the 10, so check out the stuff on the side here, right? These are all hand numbered. Okay, hand selected, okay, and exactly uh, the the precise uh, sturgeon that it came from, and the date that this was packed. So this was so today is um, Cinco de Mayo. This is hand packed yesterday. Okay, so this is actually uh, packed by Michael and his team yesterday. So you're going to get um, um, a hand touch artisanal crafted product delivered straight to your door. Okay, so we're going to take our little knife here and crack this open. Did he put a did, Michael? Did you send me one of those coins? There's one of those coins in the back. He's got these new cool coins. It's like this flipper thing. Do you have, you've got your, your switchblade? We're gonna take a spoon. You got a switchblade? I don't have a switchblade. All right. Okay, switchblade. Can, can you saber the top of the caviar? Switchblade, switchblades <laughs> I, I and caviar. Try. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna take a knife here, or take a spoon. And this is vacuum sealed. So this reason it takes a little bit of effort, a little bit of muscle to get it open. Um, it's to ensure freshness. So I'll take a look at the quality of these eggs. Okay? Look at that, look at how beautiful the gorgeous caviar is. So this is a Cetra style sturgeon caviar, hand selected by Michael and myself. It's, and I it's think glistening. Stuff is just, it's glistening. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, this is our Beastie Boys cam. All right. When you in my in my travels. I get really, really super picky about stuff like this. And I know caviar can have sort of a wide range of what it is. And sometimes you have the experience where it's like eggs, you get, at, you know, they're colored and they're dyed, yeah. or it's different fish. This is sturgeon caviar. The flavor is spectacular. All the pearls are just nice and plump. The color is really, really great. And this is what you're going to get every single time. So this is great. So if you love caviar, and we're going to rock this out tonight, and honestly, my best way to serve this, bag of chips. Got okay, a little bit of creme fraiche, and, and this is it. I mean, it's like boho chic. Chef snacks. Boho chic. This is all you need to have a really great party, all right? Our Wolf It Down Gray Caviar, Ruffles Potato the Chips. Tri the trifecta. <laughs> it doesn't get any better. One, two, three. It doesn't get any better. Yeah. It's so delicious. Like, yeah. um, so, can I make you one? Amanda, Gosh. would you like one? Yeah. Duh. Thank you. Okay, Duh. so and how nice would this be? at a brunch at your house for Mother's Day. Yes, right? it and would if be nice up, if this was at my house yes. for Mother's Day. So you get a little smear of creme fraiche, you get a little bit of caviar. You can make it super fancy if you want to with some fresh chopped chive on top of this if you yeah. want. Um, I don't, I'm not a really big fan of like the, the hard boiled the, eggs and the, the onion. Bellini. No, bellinis are really good. Yeah. Um, but I think just the crispiness of the texture of the potato chip, the freshness of the dairy with the creme fraiche, and then the saltiness, the deep ocean, gorgeous ocean flavor of the caviar, as is by itself, boom, nothing better. Not, absolutely nothing better. Nothing better. So here's the deal. Tonight, very excited about this. So again, buy one, get one free special tonight. You go on to passmorecaviar.com. Look for Wolf Gray. This is our signature partnership. and work, How great is that? Okay. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So you get this really beautiful ocean butter flavor. It is so incredibly good. It's the yeah. best stuff. It's the only thing we use in my restaurant. And thank I'm so you, excited Michael. to share this with you. I'm sorry? I said thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Okay, cool. So here's the deal, guys. Tonight, super special stuff. Buy one, get one free. Passmorecaviar.com. Go check it out. Uh, find Wolf Grey Caviar. Put two in your box. 
Use Wolf of Down in the promo box, and then we'll literally take one, uh, the price of one, and give it to you for free. These are a $290 value. It's the best caviar in America. It's no joke, it is a treat. It's absolutely super special. Take a look how gorgeous this is. Now, I actually packed some, um, dude, grab my briefcase over there, will you? I've got some really perfect spoons. Now, sometimes people get oh, really yeah, fancy. You know what, I, right? we had some some comments that like, where's your caviar spoon? I've got them. Because I know you're gonna talk They're about here. it. They're here, including people, your wife. Self-policing community out there, people asking for it. It's right there, it should be right there at the top. Just for, if anyone's joining us, we are making a Gruyere ham and asparagus frittata. It's in the oven. So we're having some caviar and we're going to talk about some stuff going on in the food world. Oh, thanks for resetting the room. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure that. Which platform are we on? I know, right. If you're joining us, like, I'm so happy you guys are here. Welcome to Wolf of Down Live right here on Facebook. This is our second class. And if this is fun, this is exciting, let us know uh, how much you enjoy it. Now, every week, if you go to wolfofdown.com forward slash live, you can see all of our classes. And we're going to be doing this for 12 weeks right in a row. Um, I think there's two dark weeks um, kind of coming up. One we're going to be in 19th, Miami. June 30th. And the other one's just like vacation week for some folks, right? Yeah. Also my birthday. It's your birthday coming Not up. today, but yeah. on June 30th. On June 30th. So anyway, so so come join us. Come hang out. Come cook. We're going to be doing this every single week. We're so excited about this. And we'll also get a chance to kind of hang out, you know, share some fun ideas with you. Laugh and joke. You got some get, fun stuff to talk about get, too, right? Yeah. Well, there's some there's some stuff going on in the food world. Like what? Our hot topics. Um, well, the big one today was 11 Madison Park in New York is going vegan. That's hot. Yeah. That's kind of a big deal. Yeah, I think it's a big Here's deal. Here's my too. question for you guys though, because I read in the article. Yeah. That they're going vegan, but they're keeping their pre-pandemic price per dinner per head. Yeah. Which is like I don't know three thirty-five. How do we feel about that? Like, no meat, no fish, same price. I think it's more expensive than that. I think it's in the threes, but still. I think, I think, I think, think, it, I think it totally makes sense because yeah. the amount of labor that goes into processing, cleaning, yeah. and, and working with vegetables alone yeah. is so much greater than that that goes into meat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I like it because, you know, like I remember being somewhere where there was a drink pairing menu that was non-alcoholic. And I was like, that's so much more interesting to me than wine pairings. Like obviously, you know, you want the good wines with your food, but there's so much more room for creativity with a non-alcoholic drink pairing menu. And I sort of feel the same way about vegetables. Yeah. It's like, how hard is it to put like a really good piece of meat on a plate? But like when, when the vegetables are at the center of the plate, like you have to be more creative, I think. So I, I got two thoughts on it, right? So um, I think a pork chop tastes like a pork chop from January to July, no big difference. Nice and juicy, nice fat cap, really lovely, very consistent experience with a pork chop. The vegetables tell the story. The vegetables are where the heart and soul of every dish comes from. Um, you really get a chance to talk about the seasonality, where things come from, that's where all the flavor mm -hmm. um, is really kind of built up. So many up. more textures, and I, I don't know. Yeah, so it's very I, interesting. I, I like vegetables way more than I like meat. I like meat. Uh, I like a good juicy steak, but to me the vegetables are where the real story and the artistry comes from at a like, restaurant as a high level of 11 Madison Park, right? And, and, right? and I've eaten there, I've eaten there a handful of times, four or five times, and I've never walked out of there and spent less than a thousand bucks on dinner. And it's usually, a, you know, a party of four, maybe six, we get right. wine. Right, well no, I'm saying like the yeah. 330 something is per head, no alcohol. So yeah, no, no alcohol, alcohol yeah. no tips. Yeah. No so alcohol the reason they're doing right. this yeah. is because the, uh, but he said, um, Daniel, or Daniel Hume yeah. said that the market, uh, the meat market and stuff, basically it's not sustainable. It's not yeah. sustainable. Right, right. Right. And I think that we're seeing a big trend in that, in this direction. Mm -hmm. Well, dirt, think, dirt candy has been on that yeah. train in New York City. Oh, this caviar is so from. good. This caviar is so, I just, yeah. I love it. <laughs> like, no, like no joke, like you, know, you and I have been pals forever. I've been cooking with you for a very long time. This stuff is the best caviar I've ever tasted. It's delicious. Thank you, Michael. Anyway, um, uh, passmorecaviar.com, Wolf Grey Reserve. Uh, buy one, get one free special tonight. This stuff is absolutely delicious. I hope you love it. I hope you fall in love with it because I think this stuff is just amazing. Yeah. It's really great. So, anyway, congratulations on Daniel Hume, Love Madison Park. Um, uh, uh, voted best restaurant in the world um, a few years ago. I, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if they're currently the best restaurant in the world, but you know, definitely one of the top five uh, restaurants in the world. And I think it's brave. I mean, Alain Poussard in Paris, I mean, that, that's an experience. All vegetable menu, made that decision a long time ago. Alain Ducasse, 
all vegetable menu. So this is not a, ne a, a new new thing. It's probably a new thing for New York, um, but definitely not a new thing for Paris, right? right? right. So a lot, a lot of uh, well, remember uh, Ubuntu out here? Uh, yeah, yeah, Ubuntu. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll never forget, Mr. <laughs> Jimmy Fox. But um, but to me, I love that. I think it's really really, really great. So so let us know in the comments if you think that's kind of interesting. Um, and if you if you even know um, Eleven Madison Park as a restaurant, it's one of the greatest restaurants in the world. Happens to be in New York City, um, right on uh, 23rd and 7th, right, right there at Madison Square Park. Yeah. Place is amazing. Uh, best of luck with the new menu. I, I think it's super brave, and let, let, let's see if they do it. You know, let's see if they can kind of hold the attention of New York. I don't see why not. Yeah. I think people are going to go just because uh, Daniel Hume is such an artist. Yeah. He's such he's and such also an like artist. Also, like cooking right? without proteins like that, it's like cooking with one hand tied behind your back, right? So it's like. I think they're only forcing creativity. Right, more. you've got you've got yeah. something to prove. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And I, I I think you got you got so many more options and so many other opportunities, right? To really kind of dive into the heart and the soul of great cooking. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. also like you know when you r take away a steak, take away the pork chop, take right. away the lamb, whatever, like you have to replace the star of the show with something, right? right. So how do you make that substantial? Yeah. And so I think it's going to be really really interesting. And I think they're going to put out some. Awesome food. I Did you see that carrot tartare? They were rocking. The, it was, this is by obviously 2019 before the pandemic. Do you see that where they would grind up a, a carrot table side in a meat grinder? No. And kind of make a tartare out of it. But and that's, he's super, but creative. That's super creative. He's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, super duper creative. Very cool. I love it. That's great. Well, speaking of unsustainable meats, <laughs> uh, the uh, so remember we on the podcast we would talk about the chicken wars, the fried chicken wars. Yeah. Totally. Well, so now it's caused this like great chicken depletion in the United States, and so the. Uh, Chicken they're like they're like just stuff. shy of like declaring a national chicken, chicken shortage, shortage oh my emergency God. because because of all the the, the chicken wars the because everybody because everybody's wars. putting fried chicken sandwiches That's on their really menu. Funny. It's really yeah. funny. That's really funny. Um, so, well, congratulations, um, you know, Taco Bell and Popeyes. <laughs> you did. We never we never yet. tried the Taco Bell I one. I looked into yeah. it. It was it was released in March, but only in like. Uh, Raleigh, right? North Carolina, and yeah. like these like small little markets, Nashville and stuff like that. This but was like this was Taco Bell that's going to do a fried chicken taco. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a gordita, right? thing. like a gordita. Yeah, but they uh, they say that they're going to launch it later this year. We'll see now, but yeah, yeah, awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna clutch this whole can of caviar. I've been <laughs> watching. <laughs> I, I think he's gonna like bite my hand. No, if I I try to him. Should people be like checking? In the oven, or is this something you like? Don't want to touch or look at or anything? I want to. I want to. Uh, we, can, we can we two minutes and forty five seconds can, on can, our can, timer. We, can we take our cam here? Our little. Um, so it's literally eighteen to twenty minutes, somewhere in between the two. Can you? Can you? Can we get a good oven shot? Because <clears throat> it looks kind of pretty right now. I think it's great. Watch the. Here we here go. Here it goes. Here we go. The Beastie Boys cam. In the oven. Bang! Look at that, huh? Look at that beautiful frittata. Beautiful puffy frittata, gorgeous golden brown eggs, looking great. Well, I think it's done. Looking right, looking good. Pull is it. it supposed to Pull get? It. Is it supposed to get golden brown on the top or yeah. no? Yeah, a little bit. Take it out. Are you sure? We're, we're sure, sure. Feel feels it. great. Yeah, pa feels Passmore great. says his nickname for you is the caviar Hoover. I'm the Hoover. I am the yeah, Hoover. I love it. You know it. I know it. We know it. Caviar is so good because it's just such good stuff. Because caviar. Because sometimes if people. If they've had like a bad experience with caviar, it may not be their thing. Like if they've had some, you know, at a at an event or on, on a or derp someplace, it wasn't like really good high quality stuff. They may be like, okay, it's not for me. But if you've had really good high quality caviar, I'm telling you, it is just such an experience. Yeah. So if you if uh, if if you if your mom, if your sister or your mom, your aunt or whomever really loves great caviar, tonight's a great opportunity to kind of like show them and give them something special and something very very unique too, which I think could be kind of cool. Okay, so check it out. So so um, do you need so, to let it rest at all or no before you flip it? No. I mean, it's like pretty sturdy, right? Like yeah. Once it's and so this this is what's so cool about it, right? So like literally, you could slide it around inside the pan. Look how pretty that is. So this is an open faced. Full proof, dad proof. You can't mess it up, right? It's a great omelet. Yeah. Kid, kid proof. So I just kid went. Proof, yeah, I just went around with the rubber spatula again, and just kind of and give it a little, give it a little shimmy, bro. Like free, like, free the sides just hashtag, a little bit, so you know when you flip out, it's not just like half gonna fall out. Hashtag free you can kind of shimmy it like that, and you see how it kind of loosens from the yeah. edge. We're ready to go. We're ready to go. All right, cool. But so before you do that, you, you want to okay, let's sit for a second. You want to mix our salad greens together? 
All right, guys, so don't forget. So um, I think this is really nice served with fresh greens. So it really kind of feels like a lovely brunch. So again, we've got some, we've got some beautiful, you know, like uh, fresh spinach. We've got uh, pea shoots, whatever, whatever you want to get. Uh, stuff out of the bag, stuff out of the box. Look how bright green that is. We've made more vinaigrette than you're going to need. All right, and I think that's kind of cool because that way you can deli it up and then, and then kind of use it throughout the week, okay? Little drizzle for rizzle. Got a little bit of salt, a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. Bang, bang, bang. And give us a little toss. You want to tell everybody what we're making next week? Yes, next week in partnership with Rosie Organic Chicken. Yes. We are making a chi Moroccan chicken tagine. It is a beautiful dish. Really, really great really dish. Really beautiful. It's one like, of those, like one pot wonder ones too. Totally. And it's so good. Yeah. And, and honestly, it's chicken breast with a really fancy rice dish, right? So, right. so, so if you've never had a tagine or make tagine, or wonder if your kids will eat it, it's great. You're going to love it. And but if you don't have a tagine, don't worry, because we're worry not even going to use a tagine. Yeah, we're just going to use it. We're just going to do a pan. Right? Forget about yeah. it. Forget it's it. almost like it's almost like a paella. It is. Ish, right, right. right? right. With just like kind of a With different, just like flavor, different profile. flavor profile. Yeah. yeah. Right. No oh. saffron, oh. more harissa yep. based. Yep. Let's talk about it. Okay. So pan, right? So whatever whatever is this is a nice big platter. Whatever is flat, right? It's because sometimes we do this on a board. Whatever works, okay? So you want to put nice even pressure on top of this. Uh, pick up your pan, okay? Give it a nice flip. Oh, this is fire. Ready? Are you ready? Ta-da! Yes, there it is. And, that, and look how... Look how clean look, the pan is. Look how clean the pan is, right? So, so none of the sticks. Cleanup is nice and easy. All right, see if we can kind of move this over to the center, just a touch, okay? Love that. Chives and Parmesan cheese, okay? Let it rain. Ooh, is somebody that, said caviar in the dressing. Caviar in the deep. Now you're talking. <laughs> Speaking my language. I love caviar. Thank you so much, Michael Passmore. Uh, we got this great partnership going on. And again tonight, guys, buy one, get one free. It's a $290 product. It's the best domestic caviar ever. Um, you know, put together by an artisan who knows what he's doing. The stuff is amazing. I want to put a little bit of olive oil on top of this. And then, is, is this beautiful, guys? Now, here's the deal. Moms out there everywhere. If you want to take this video tonight and gently drop it into your man's DM and say, I just watched Tyler make this frittata, and that's what I want for Mother's Day. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Hint, hint, wink, wink. You got to let them know. Okay, so guys, we're going to take our nice, big, beautiful salad here, and then kind of drop it off on the side. And, and this is it. Mother's Day at its finest. Fantastic. Asparagus, ham, Gruyere frittata. I think this is, this is the cool presentation. Um, but let's um, let's see what she looks like on the inside. Right? How many how many people will this serve? Um, I think this will easily serve six to eight, six. six people. Yeah, six to eight people easily. Yeah. easily. Okay. All right, guys. So here's the deal. Let's uh, let's get one on a plate. I want to cut one open real fast so you guys can see what this looks like. Are you guys having fun? Are you not entertained? Are you having a good time? We love you. We so appreciate you joining us for. I'll use some of these. Um, we so appreciate you, you you joining us for our new venture here on Facebook every week, Wolf It Down Live. We're having a good time doing it, bringing you all kinds of fun conversation and dishes and cooking and cooking techniques. Okay, oh, so here we go. So we're gonna take our frittata here. Just cut a nice big pie shape. Ready? Look at this. Look at this. Coming up. Coming up. Coming up. Coming up. Isn't that beautiful? Great, easy, simple Mother's Day feast. Let's show our moms out there how much we love them. Let's make something really, really great this year. Check out this frittata recipe. And we would really, really love it if you could share this recipe, this video, as you're watching right now, with as many friends as possible. Uh, we're having so much fun putting this together, and we really like to watch the growth uh, with the video content and how many people are watching, all kinds of fun stuff. So yep. let's do this together. And, and as we move forward, yeah. We're going to be doing this so that if you cook along and you post a photo and you tag us on Instagram, we will repost, but then we will put all those into a randomizer and somebody will win each week. Yeah. So yeah. it pays to cook along, it pays to tag, it pays to post. Pays to cook along, pays to tag, pays to post, right? That's, that, that's, our, that's our new motto. Mm -hmm.
We had so much fun hanging with you guys today. Um, brother, you want, you want to jump into that? And Amanda, can I make, can I actually, ladies first, mom. Yes, thank you, mom. Like the mother in the room, right? <laughs> right? Here you go, that's for you. Thank Happy you. Mother's Day, Amanda. So appreciate you. Happy Mother's Day to my lovely wife, uh, Tolan, who's at home watching right now. And She's Dana, watching. And Dana, and, and my mom, uh, Phyllis Olson, who's watching, oh God, and so Jan Florence, my stepmother, and everybody out there. All moms in the world, it's the hardest job out there, and we just want to let you know that we absolutely appreciate you. Your day, come up on Sunday. Make, make somebody that you love make you this fantastic dish, because you're going to love it, and they're going to love making it. The house is going to smell good, and, they, and they're going to make this like mm, feast. And it's perfect. The recipe is so dialed in. We love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks, everybody. Wolf it down Come back live. next week. Episode number two. Come back next Come week. Back. And uh, send us some comments, some chats. We'd love to uh, kind of hear from you. We so appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us this week. And we will see you guys next time right here on Facebook next week, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, right here on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Bye. everyone.